I'm Professor Frank Holt at the University of Houston, where I've been researching, writing, and teaching about world history for 40 years. My latest book is When Money Talks, A History of Coins and Numismatics. Coins can be made from many materials, including gold, plastic, copper, and even cardboard. On the left, you see a gold $20 U.S. coin minted in 1907 and showing Lady Liberty. Next to it is a plastic cupro nickel five euro coin minted in 2016. Next, we see a copper one half cent U.S. coin that was struck in 1833. And finally, on the right, a cardboard 25 cent token used by service personnel in modern Afghanistan. Over time, the most common material used to manufacture coinage has been silver. Looking carefully, you can see this silver thread running through our history, linking our past and present. Let's begin unraveling that thread in the remote birthplace of coined money, ancient Lydia, a land in modern day Turkey. On the obverse or head side, we see a lion fighting a bull. And on the reverse or tail side, we see two punch marks, which were made by the tool that hammered the image into the metal. This silver stator was minted in the sixth century BCE by King Croesus, a man whose storied wealth gives us the saying, as rich as Croesus. The silver thread wove its way among the founders of the world's first democracy at ancient Athens in the fifth century BCE. On the obverse, we find the goddess Athena wearing a warrior's helmet, earrings, and a necklace. On the reverse stands her owl with an olive branch and the inscription Alpha Theta Epsilon, standing for the Athenians. The classic design of this silver tetradrachma persists on some modern euros made of alloyed metals. Our silver thread passes through this coin, minted by Plato, but not the famous Athenian philosopher. This man was a Greek king who ruled in what is now Afghanistan during the second century BCE. He wears a plumed cavalry helmet and a military cloak. On the reverse, the radiant sun god Helios races his chariot across the sky, pulled by four horses. On the coin, King Plato calls himself Epiphanes, meaning the god manifest on earth to declare his exalted powers. Next, we follow the silver thread to ancient Rome. There, near a temple dedicated to the goddess Juno Moneta, the Romans manufactured their coins. From her name, we derive the modern words money, monetary, mint, and mintage. Juno Moneta appears on the obverse of this silver denarius. On the reverse are the titles of the Roman emperor Trajan, along with tools used at the mint, the hammer, tongs, and dies. Coins were struck by placing a heated piece of metal between the dies with these tongs, then hammering the dies to imprint the design or type onto the resulting coin. Looping eastward into ancient Parthia, the silver thread sometimes bound disparate cultures together. This silver drachma of King Mithridates II was minted near modern day Tehran in the first century BCE. The obverse shows the king. The reverse depicts an archer testing his bow. The writing is in Greek because the Parthians borrowed freely from other peoples. Their empire straddled the Great Silk Road and they respected neighboring cultures, growing fond, for example, of Greek literature and drama. During the Carolingian and Saxon periods, the silver thread wound its way through a group of mints entirely under the control of women who produced a distinctively gendered iconography as on this silver fenig, minted in the 12th century CE by Abbas Beatrix II of Vincenburg, Germany. It is a bracteate, meaning it is a thin coin with the image struck on one side only. This one depicts a female figure holding the Gospels. As the silver thread ran through medieval Europe, it served more than just commercial interests. Chronicles of the miracles attributed to the English king Henry VI include numerous cases of people bending his coins to heal the sick and injured. 
the bent coin was sanctified and sacrificed by rendering it useless as money. Here is a silver half groat of Henry VI from the 15th century CE. Henry appears on the obverse with a cross on the reverse. Our silver thread crossed the Atlantic in the age of the explorers, tying the old world to the new. This Spanish silver eight real of Philip IV came from the mint at Mexico City in 1650. The coin carries images of a shield and a cross. This specimen, like so many others, was salvaged from a shipwreck. The silver thread has traveled thousands of miles through thousands of years of history. Sometimes, of course, it is frayed and tangled, producing interesting monetary errors along the way. This so-called 11-cent coin is a 1946 silver dime accidentally overstruck with one-cent dies. The humble coins in your pockets and purses are part of a long and impressive history that has threads made of many materials running through it, not just silver, but others as well. For more about the fascinating world of coins and their place in history, be sure to read When Money Talks.